Hi, this is Travis Romine, and today we're going to be talking about one year with my Tesla Solar and my Southern California Edison electric bill, um, how much money my solar system cost. Um, we're going to be going over my electric bill, how much I paid every single month, and at the end of the year with the uh, net surplus compensation, how much uh, energy I sent to the grid, how much energy I pulled, and do I owe the electric company or do they owe me some money at the end of the year? and how many years pay back um, for my solar system. So we're also gonna talk about the production, how much energy that Tesla quoted me that uh, my solar system would produce in one year, how much it actually produced in one year. So yeah, this is the accumulation of all these videos for the whole year and how much money I made with uh, solar versus uh, paying the Southern California Edison Electric Company. So yeah, a lot of great information, exciting news. So let's get into it. All right, well, I do uh, videos every month on my Southern California Edison electric bill to show how much money um, I owe or don't owe with them. I also do videos every month on my solar production, and I have a Tesla uh, referral link down in the description if you want to use that to do anything for purchasing stuff with Tesla and get a discount. So if you want to get that information, like and subscribe, and we'll get that information to you. All right, well, some quick specs on my system. I live just above San Diego, California, in the Temecula Murrieta Valley. My system is 12.24 kilowatts. It is 36 panels, Q-cell panels, at 340 watts per panel. And my panels face east-west with my largest array facing west. All right, well, first we'll go over my uh, solar production. This is the quote that Tesla gave me. It was pretty much the specs of my system, and it said annually I would get 18,588 kilowatt hours. And actually, I ended up after a year getting 19,600 kilowatt hours. So I actually got one megawatt hour or 1,000 kilowatt hours more than they estimated me. So yeah, you know, getting higher than energy production than you were quoted is always a positive. So yeah, it worked out really good. Okay, well, here's my Southern California Edison bill. And this is actually the December bill. I think it ended on January 7th, though. But yeah, as you can see here, it says previous balance 1686, which I paid. And then it says new charges credit of 162.43. You do not pay. Your account has a credit. That's always great having a credit. So it just kind of explains right here. This is your 12-month settlement bill or a true up bill, some people call it. Your 12-month billing period for net energy metering is now complete. You do not owe any 12-month settlement charges. So that's great information. So all year long, we do net metering, how much energy I send to the grid and how much I pull from the grid. And at the end of the year, we settle up, and that's what this is right here. So at the end of the 12-month period, I do not owe any money at all, and I actually have a credit of 162.43. So let's go through the bill, and we'll see what it all says. All right. So it just kind of shows the credit right here, just a summary of the credit from one year, 12 9 2021 to 1 9 2022. So that just kind of shows it. We'll scroll down and look at all the pertinent information. This is just basic information right here. It kind of just describes some of the terminology. If you want to pause and read any of that, go ahead. But just kind of breaks down their charges and how they explain it. Things to know. Yeah, more... Uh, Common information here, we'll just scroll through that. Uh, these are just fees and charges and how they're explaining them. So we'll scroll through those and get to, the cost varies by time of day. I'm on a time of use plan, so this kind of, kind of breaks it down. Basically between four and 9 p.m. is the most expensive time and any other time is cheaper. <laughs> so all right, here's your uh, past and current electricity usage. So this just breaks down how much energy I sent to the grid, how much energy I pulled to the grid. Um, just kind of breaks it all down, consumption and net generation. So yeah, check all that out. So for the month of December, I used 637 kilowatt hours more than I sent to the grid. So that just kind of breaks it down. Uh, your daily average electricity usage, um, let's just see here. Last year was 2259, and this year my daily average was 1991. I do have an electric car, and I use way more electricity now than I used to because of that. So this just kind of breaks it down over the year. You can see how the 
winter months and the summer months, you know, I use more and I generate more in the summer. So that just kind of breaks it all down from 2021 all the way up to now, January 2022. All right, here's the great information right here. Details of your new charges. So there's a basically a connection fee, which is, you know, anywhere from 10 to $15 a month that you have to pay. But right down here, it says net surplus compensation total. So as of how much energy I sent to the grid and how much energy I pulled from the grid, I have a credit of 4,766 kilowatt hours. And they times that by 3.767 cents. And that gives me a total credit of 179.54. So at the end of the year, um, they owe me 179.54. So that's basically the net at the end of the year. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I knew it'd be around between 100 and 200 dollars. So they don't pay you the same rate, you know. Some people pay 20 cents a, a kilowatt from them, but when you get uh, a check from them, they don't pay you with the uh, uh, retail rate. I think it's, you know, a lot less than that. So. Yeah, um, it worked out at the end of the year. Um, I will have uh, a credit from them for one seventy nine fifty four. Now I think this bill ended up being right around seventeen dollars, so they subtracted that from the one seventy nine fifty four. That's why you see the credit of I think one sixty two. Yeah, down here. So for this month, I, I I owed I think for the connection fee, I owed like seventeen dollars. So they subtracted that. So now my credit is one sixty two forty three. Yeah, so. It really worked out entire year, and uh, they owe me instead of me owing them. That's nice. So that was the plan of getting solar. So yeah, it all worked out. This is just another scrolling down here, basically a little bit more explanation. So it shows kind of what I pulled from the grid, sent to the grid, and how it breaks down on the pricing. But over here, this kind of breaks down more information, so I'll go ahead and read that. Uh oh I lost the screen. Come on back. Where'd you go? Scroll down, there it is. Okay, so additional information regarding your net compensation generation. Your year-to-date energy charges total as of previous month, 884.93 credit. Your current monthly energy charge total was 111.24. Your year-to-date energy charges is a credit of 773.69. Now remember, they don't pay me that amount because, you know, that's the retail rate, and we don't get paid the retail rate. Um, your year-to-date kilowatts, so for the year, I have a credit of 4,766 kilowatt hours. If you earned a credit on your bill, the amount you receive may be less than your year-to-date energy charge, which is based on SSE's rates. Your compensation total is based on the year-to-date kilowatt shown above, which is then multiplied by the CPUC approval value per kilowatt, which... We've already went through that. So, yeah, I have a, a credit of uh, 4766 kilowatt hours, and they paid me for those. All right, well, here's a breakdown of my electric bill for the entire year. For 2021, as you can see in January, um, the basic charge or connection fee that you have to pay every single month, which is separate than the energy charges. Um, so some people just call it a connection fee, which sounds good. So in January, yeah, I had to pay uh, twelve fifty nine, and in February, I paid eleven thirty four, and in March, I got a climate credit, so I didn't have to pay anything in March, but I did have a credit of eight twenty nine, and then April, that credit was still going on, so I still had a credit of seven oh one, and then in May, I had to pay three seventy nine, and then in June, I had to pay twelve ninety nine. And in July, I had to pay fourteen forty five, and then August thirteen eighty one, and then in September, I got another climate credit, so I had a credit of twelve twenty four, and then in October, I had to pay two ninety nine, and in November, I had to pay sixteen eighty six, and in December, uh, it was seventeen eleven. So between the credits and what I had to pay, I my net cost for the entire year that I paid Edison was sixty eight thirty nine. And with my net surplus compensation credit I got from Southern California Edison for $179.54, um, between what I paid and how much they paid me, I actually made $111.15. So over the entire year, I didn't pay for any electricity, and I actually got um, money back from Southern California Edison, $111.15. So yeah, it worked out really good with solar. 
All right, well, Southern California Edison um, charges anywhere from 19 cents up to 49 cents per kilowatt hour, depending on summer and winter rates. So I averaged mine out to be about 23 cents a kilowatt. You know, I'm on time of use, so it kind of jumps around. Um, this is being very conservative. It's actually more than that because they've raised their rates. But for this year, I've used 14,936 kilowatt hours times the conservative 23 cents that Edison charges. Um, which comes out to $3,435.28. That's how much I would have paid Edison if I did not have solar. But if we look at how much I actually paid for solar, it was actually $23,500, but after taxes it came out to $24,300 for the cost of my solar system. And if you minus the $6,100 uh, tax credit that I received, and you also minus the $250 Tesla referral, that I received. I thought I was going to get 500, but I ended up only getting 250 from Tesla. My solar system actually cost $17,950. So if we take that $17,950 and divide it by $34,25,28, which I would have paid Southern California Edison, it turns out that my payback is a right around five years, a little over five years. So instead of paying Southern California Edison forever, I have a solar system. Um, that in five and a half years, I will have paid the same amount for my solar system that I would have paid um, Southern California Edison. But now I own a solar system, which makes my house more valuable, and I don't have to pay for electricity anymore. So saved a lot of money, and now I own a solar system. My actual payback will probably be a lot less than five years once we get uh, some more electric cars and I use up all that extra uh, kilowatt hours instead of sending it back to the grid and not getting paid much for it will actually use all of that so the payback will definitely be less than five years so yeah worked out really good all right well everything seemed to work out pretty good um, not paying for electricity the entire year and getting a credit back from Southern California Edison for hundred and eleven dollars that is fantastic you know everything worked out pretty pretty close to plan give or take so that's really great um, also, you know, having a payback, you know, about a uh, little over five years, you know, once we get more electric cars um, and we use more electricity, that payback will actually be less than five years. So um, paying for solar um, and owning something and uh, upping the uh, price of your home for having solar on it and not giving all that money to the electric company really worked out good. So. Yeah, thanks for coming along with this journey. Um, that's my story. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try to answer which ones I can. But um, yeah, it really worked out and saved a lot of money and uh, actually got paid for having solar. That's uh, interesting. <laughs> so yeah, uh, any uh, questions, let me know in the comments and uh, we'll see you on the next one.